We are here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. The Tournament Directors Association is holding their annual summit inside right now. Card Player has gained exclusive access to this meeting. Let's see what's going on inside. We are going to go ahead and start this meeting. My name is Linda Johnson, and I'm on the board of directors for the TDA. But first of all, I have to ask you, do you know the difference between God and a tournament director? God never thinks he's a tournament director. So. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, I, as I said, I'm Linda Johnson, known as the First Lady of Poker, which really means the Old Lady of Poker, because I've been in the industry for more than 30 years. It, it's a great time for poker, as we all know. I've been to more than 250 card rooms around the country, and when I walk in and I see that they're using TDA rules, which is way, way the majority of all the card rooms in the country, it makes me very proud that we are part of this, and I hope you all feel a pride of of uh, being part of the people who are going to shape the poker industry. In 2001, Matt Savage came up with the idea of having standardized tournament rules, and he came to me with the idea, and he said, what do you think about this? And I said, great. You know, when I ran Card Player, you know, it was really hard to get anything standardized. We did do some things like the chipping races and, and uh, procedures for a few things, but standardized rules for cash games didn't look like it was going to work out, but maybe for tournaments it would. So we went to our good friends, Jan Fisher and Dave Lamb, and asked them to help us to form this organization. So in 2001, we had a meeting. I think we met at the Orleans, and we had about 22 people show up. And it was a struggle. It was such a struggle. Everybody wanted standardized rules as long as they were standard with whatever their tournament rules were. And nobody wanted to give. And by the end of an eight-hour fight, we had adopted 14 very superficial rules. And, um, you know, we were all very frustrated. So we tried it again in year two, and the four of us decided if it doesn't work this year, you know, we're just going to hang it up because we all have to work together to get these rules. We need real rules. We need meat, you know, and potatoes for the TDA. And we came in there and we kind of started off with, look guys, you know, either put up or get out, you know. And that, that year we were able to come up with the 39 rules that we currently have and everybody did work together and it was wonderful. So we have not met since then, so this is our, our annual meeting <laughs> of, the, of the TDA. And um, let me read the mission statement for the TDA, and that is to adopt basic standards, rules, and procedures that will positively impact the industry. That's pure and simple to adopt basic standards, rules, and procedures that will positively impact the industry. Um, we are not empowered to get into certain areas such as, um, you know, how, how do I play ace-king? How do I market my promotion? What's the status of online poker? That's not what we're here for. And we want to make sure you all understand what we're here for today is to adopt uh, industry rules for, that, that are going to be standardized for poker tournaments. So. We really need to stick to the goals during the summit. We have lots of work to do. And I want to introduce the board of directors at this time. It's such a pleasure to work with them. Starting all the way over there is Mr. Dave Lamb. Dave Lamb, thank you. Thank you, and I've always been in it for the money, so thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> he better get, you better get a day job, that's all I can say. And how much did it so, cost you so far? And uh, mm. Jan Fisher is on Dave's left, Jan Fisher. <laughs> TD extraordinaire. And the answer is, just so I don't have to say it all day long, is shoulder surgery. Yes, it hurts, and please don't hug me. <laughs> and I love you all. So, okay, and then I really, really have to thank this man on my right, Mr. Matt Savage, who has put in so many hours. He has worked the hardest of all of us. He's the youngest, so he should work the hardest. Yeah. But, but of the four of us, he has worked so hard. You, you just don't even know how many emails he sent back and forth. And he ordered the, the pens and the papers and the cookies okay. and coordinated the dinners and... You know, just everything, I, I just have to contribute so much. He is the one who keeps us inspired when we're all, you know, we don't really need this. And he's like, yes, let's go, let's do it. So um, Matt has been on more than 300 poker TV shows, and he's going to be making his appearance in Lucky You very soon. So I am going to turn the meeting over to Matt Savage. Thank you. Just, this is a unbelievable attendance. I, I'm shocked by how many people are here today. But that being said, we would like to hold all questions until we ask for questions. What we have right now is a, a list of rules that number 31, and in addition, we've added some uh, heading into the today. We have 38 now. So Everyone have a sheet. 
The majority of these rules are already widely accepted in the industry, so we don't feel like there's enough complaints or things happening with these rules that we need to change them. The last thing that we want is for everybody to have to go back home to your home casino and, and somebody do something that you've been doing for three years and it's been a TDA rule and they say, well, that's not a TDA rule anymore. That's what we don't want to happen. However, there are some things in the rules that we've gone over and changed as far as wording or maybe have expanded upon a rule that we already have there. Um, one of the things that we hear the most of is the use of may and there is a reason for that. And, and Dave, you can talk a little bit about why we use the word may in a few of the rules. Um, yeah, thanks for the prompt. I had no clue, but I'll talk to you a little <laughs> bit about, about the use of the word may. In many instances, what we have are scenarios where if the offense has been determined, then you give the rule. So the only way you can accomplish that is to leave a may situation. As, as we go through this a little bit, I'll actually point out to you one or two of those scenarios. You're going to say, how come that's not a will be a penalty or will be the way we do things? And we've actually tried to close up as many of those little loopholes as you have suggested to us to do as possible. But they're still going to be there a couple. And don't be afraid at the end of this session to uh, inquire further on how we, why we're still using a may in any given instance. OK, uh, as I've said, this is a voluntary thing. So it's a great that everybody wants to get behind this. And standardizing rules is so important for us. Uh, as you go from venue to venue, event to event, for the players to have the same uh, rules as we go to place to place, it's just a huge coup for all of us because if we, if we can get those rules the same, obviously, it makes our lives easier. And you just point to the board and say, it's right there. It's on the rules. And we've had that happen, so that's been a good thing for us. We had the chance to speak to the Director of Poker Operations here at the Venetian, Kathy Raymond, about the TDA. Well, I think that the guests are, are pleased about the TDA coming together again. Um, our guests are always looking for consistency in the rules. Our staff as well. Uh, the TDA has been instrumental in... Uh, making consistent many, many of the tournament rules, and I think it's great for the industry. So how long have you been a member of the TDA? Well, I've actually been associated with the TV, TDA for, uh, since their inception, um, which has been uh, a number of years back, five or six years back. Um, not being a tournament director myself, I've been remotely associated, but I've always been extremely supportive, um, and they're doing a great job, and, and I'll continue to support them throughout. So you think that the TDA, by regulating the rules and regulating everything, is helping out the poker industry, helping it to become more uniform? Absolutely. Um, what players would like to do is, you know, to be able to go to uh, events uh, across the country um, and to be able to have the same rules enforced from one event to the other. I think it's very, very important for the players to be comfortable with uh, going into a tournament and knowing what the rules are going to be. So now we know the, turn the TDA started a few years back. It didn't have very many members. Now it has over 400 members. Do you think it will continue to grow? I think so. I think as, as poker has been growing over the past five or six years, uh, the TDA has grown proportionately. And I think we'll continue to grow as more and more uh, tournament directors and poker room managers uh, realize that consistency in those rules is what the players really want. We're here with a founding member of the Tournament Directors Association, Matt Savage, and he's going to tell us about the recent summit held at the Venetian. Matt, how do you feel about the progress, first of all, that the Tournament Directors Association has made since its inception? Well, I think it's huge. First of all, we started uh, the first year back in 2001 with about 25 members. It was very small. Uh, and then it grew the following year to up to 40. And now we have upwards of 400 members. We had uh, 116 attendees at this summit. So it was, it was a huge event. And do you think that tournament poker as a whole has benefited from the TDA? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think for the players that play day to day, venue to venue, I mean, to have standardized rules is so important, and I think it's a big part of tournaments and, and what's going on in the game today. Can you explain to us the process for adding new rules at the summits? Well, we had a, a, a few meetings before about key issues that we get asked about all the time. So we put those up for a vote okay. amongst all the people. Now, realize this time, with 116 attendees, it was going to be more difficult. However, we had very strong support, and even those that disagreed with something may bend and go the other way if the major majority went with it. Okay, were there any new rules that were added at the most recent summit? Yeah, definitely some new rules were added, uh, a couple changes to the rules. We had 38 rules before. Yes. We ended up combining, combining some of them, oh, okay. uh, and we added more rules to that. Uh, some of the major rules that you'll see is going to affect the poker world instantly will be the new penalty rule that we came up with. What's uh, that? You have to, uh, instead of missing a time amount, 
you'll miss a round. So if there's oh. 10 players at your table, you're going to miss 10 hands. So no matter what happens, you're going to miss a set of blinds. So what we had that makes sense. was a major problem before was people stalling. And we had people uh, playing faster because people were on penalties. And it was never consistent, never fair for the players. And this way, every time you get a penalty, you receive the same amount of discipline. And, uh, you know, we had an uh, action or a thing happen in uh, Australia where Andy Black did not like the fact that this player got a 10-minute penalty mm -hmm. and stalled for two consecutive hands for five minutes and he missed one hand. And I don't think that's fair. I think don't think that's equitable, and I don't think that's the way it should go. So I want to make it fair. They for know what they're going to get. They know what they're going to get. Great. And were there any other rules that uh, were added, or any other combinations? Yeah, some of the key ones were the fact that now you have to be at your seat. We had a rule that you had to be in your chair, and it was so hard and comical because people were trying to. It was his butt in the chair. Was his butt not in the chair? Yeah. You know, his butt's bigger than mine, so he's got an advantage. <laughs> things like that uh, were happening, and because of that, we made it that you had to be at your seat. And I think that's a little more fair. So if you turning around paying a waitress or something like that, that it, it makes it fair for them. Also, communication devices. Um, I see a lot uh, in major tournaments, people texting each other. Mm -hmm. They'll no longer be allowed. No okay. texting people. Not during the play uh, at not all? Not during the play, not being on cell phones, uh, and no communication devices at all. So the problem we're going to run into is the fact that phones will soon be iPod or MP3 players yeah. and things like that. And we're going to have to look at that again. Um, that was one of the most heated debates that we had was headphone use. Uh, about 70% said we should just not allow it all. But all together I, I, for the entire right, tournament? Exactly. But I know, because I've played events, how difficult that would be because players really enjoy listening to their iPod. They might have Mattiso and Tony G be <laughs> sitting between them, and then, you know, next thing you know, you're going to have a real problem. So that was another one. Uh, the dealers will now call string raises across the board, which wasn't the case in, in a lot of different areas. So the dealers themselves will call the string raises as opposed yes, to the players saying that exactly. was a string raise and pointing it out? Exactly. Okay. Uh, and another one that I really like is called re repeated etiquette violations, excessive chatter. Now, I mean, you may be sitting at a table where a guy just won't stop talking. If we get called to the table a couple times, we may assess a penalty for that. Also, uh, folding out of turn, something that we see happen quite often in and it's really a poor etiquette to do that. If yeah, if you, you're not going to play the hand, you walk away from the table. It really could affect action. That's another really positive change we made. So, and you know, the other last one that I feel is important is the fact that time called. If you get your time called on you, you might have a minute to act on your hand. But if you keep getting time called on you, it's up to the tournament director to decide. And we discussed some of the ways you can do that, shortening the time after that. So that be that will be the use of the word may that I heard discussed yes. yesterday. Yes. Yes. Yeah, May was a major question. You know, there's a lot of things that are gray. And our, our rule number one is fairness and integrity. That's what we want to get instilled in our in all of our rules. So the fact that if you feel feel that the integrity may be challenged by a certain rule here, you have the right as a floor person to overrule that. Okay. And were there any rules suggested at the summit that were not implemented that were voted down? Uh, yeah, there was some. Uh, there was a lot of rules that were suggested. A <laughs> lot of great ideas. Um, one that's used at the Commerce right now, and Sherry Duncan. She uses a all-in button. Uh, oh. Whenever anybody's all-in, the dealer will throw out a button. So I think that a lot of people are going to go to that. Um, also, you know, the announcement of chips in play. When you introduce new chips into the tournament, many times tournament directors don't announce it. Somebody throws out a big bet, and they don't know what they're they're up against. Um, also, a rebuy accountability came up, and you know, a lot of issues with that. Um, another key heated debate was the show one, show both. Couldn't get agreement on it. But uh, for the majority of the people, they're doing it. If you show one of your cards at the end of the hand, you have to show both. Now, Daniel Negreanu and I have gone back and forth on this. We, he hates it. I use it. It's one of those things that... Where did you know, that rule come way. from? It came from uh, the fact that people were showing cards to the audience uh, and then showing cards to their neighbors and not showing it to everybody at the table. And we'd get called to the table constantly about, did he show one, did he show both? Well, if you're going to show one, show both. Why? What is the point of it showing It makes your one decision more difficult, basically. If it's exactly. What is the point well, of showing Which one did he show? Was it this one? Was it Many that one? Many times it's used to needle people, which we don't feel belongs in poker. Okay. They feel it's a part of poker. So. so how do you feel about the turnout that this summit had? Do you know how many countries were represented? I uh, don't know how many countries were represented, but I know there was definitely some worldwide involvement. Yeah, absolutely. Marcel uh, was there for the International Poker Federation. Marcel Lusk. Our man there, <laughs> yeah. He was there. Uh, representing the International Poker Federation. We had some people from Belgium. Um, obviously, all of those people that 
are international, want to know what the rules are in the TDA, yeah. and they will go to them as soon as they, they find out. So we had 116 attendees, yet there's probably 300 different card rooms around the world that will be using TDA rules after this meeting. So altogether, were you pleased with the way the summit turned out and all the rules that were implemented? Uh, the four of us, Jan Fisher, Linda Johnson, and Dave Lamb and I, going into this, we didn't know what to expect. But yeah. we came in there and we were surprised how many people were willing to change minor things in their rules so they could standardize. And everybody left there with a great feeling of accomplishment, and we're very proud of that. Do you have anything else you'd like to share about the TDA? Well, definitely for players, for uh, dealers, for TDs, card room managers, if you have any questions at all about information, membership, or rules, we will answer all of them. All four of us are up daily answering questions, and you can send those questions to ask the board at pokertda.com, or you can just go to our website, which is pokertda.com, and we will answer your questions for you. And we have players and, and everybody asking questions. We probably answer 10 to 15 questions a day, wow. and I'm sure after this it will grow even more. And we don't mind doing it. We love it because we love poker. Great. Thank you very much, Matt. You got it. This is Lizzie Harrison with Matt Savage for Card Player TV.